Okay, Max, thanks for being with us here on WeAreTennis.com. I'm not as professional as George Holmesy, but I'm going to try and, good. And, and do as good. First of all, how are you, and, and what what's your news these days? What are you doing with the rest of your time when you're not on Grand Slams, commentating and yeah. following tennis? Sure. My, um, I go to all the four Grand Slams uh, for uh, Eurosport, Wimbledon. I work for Wimbledon's website. Uh, and I go to another maybe five or six events on the men's or the uh, ATP or the WTA Tour, also for Eurosport. For three months of the year, I travel around uh, North America in, an, uh, in a motorhome, in an RV, and we conduct uh, group lessons in tennis clubs. Uh, we do about 10 days to two weeks in a row, and, and we, we select different regions in, uh, in North America. And, uh, That is really fun. That's Willander on wheels. That's Willander on wheels, and uh, we do. We go to campgrounds, and we sleep in the motorhome, and it's me and another tennis pro, and uh, we bring a photographer uh, with us, and takes cool photos and of the players that are there, and, and of campgrounds and anything crazy we can find. So it's really fun, and uh, it's one of the most positive things I, I've ever done for sure. So what do you do the rest of the time? You just chill out? <laughs> I just chill out. But if you if you're good at math. That makes it about seven months, between seven and eight months on the road, uh, which is what I've been doing since I was really 16 years old and turned pro. So nothing's really changed. Um, a lot of people think that's maybe too much traveling, but if you can do what you love to do and you get paid to do it, um, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about um, today's tennis. I think tennis is taking a turn today. Uh, the, the domination of the big four, the famous big four, I'm not going to say it's coming to an end, but it's coming closer to the end than it was from the beginning. And there's a new generation rising. Is this exciting times in tennis, men's tennis, I mean? Uh, it's hugely exciting, yeah. You just hope that, that the breakthrough um, of more youngsters is coming. Uh, the, not just a breakthrough of, of being able to beat the best players, uh, Djokovic, Nadal, Federer and Murray, but also win Grand Slams. And obviously it has sort of started with Marin Cilic, Stan Wawrinka, obviously not a youngster, but... Um, You just hope that Roger Federer is still around when the likes of Nick Kyrgios, uh, Tenasi Kokonakis, for, to name a few, two Australians, once they break through um, properly, it'd be nice to see that Federer is, is still around because it'd be see, nice to see how he deals with the, young, the youngsters. It's a completely different game they play. Uh, they hit the ball as hard as they can sometimes. They sort of slap at the ball um, and they have big serves. Uh, they got an interesting attitude, to say the least. Good most of the time, but uh, quite vocal and uh, and not afraid of playing in the big stages. Okay. Now uh, a quick word uh, on the French Open. Obviously, this edition, uh, Novak Djokovic, ultra favorite when you look at his results this season. But we're in Nadal's home. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know if you can say that Djokovic. You can say that he's a favorite to win the title until he's facing Rafael Nadal. He's most probably the favorite to beat Nadal as well, but it's it's really not fair because if you if you have to play Nadal on a sunny day uh, on Philippe Chatrier, five sets, he has so many good memories, Nadal, and I don't think it matters who he's playing against. He's going to be feeling pretty good about it. In fact, he most probably won't even look at the other side so that he doesn't have to realize it's Novak Djokovic. So, and I think that both players are, are really must feel that if the conditions are not the way that Djokovic needs them to be. If they're hot and it's, uh, and it's dry and maybe a little bit windy, I would say that climbing Rafa Nadal's mountain is very tall for any player in the world, including Novak Djokovic. Is it an advantage for uh, Novak to play him in quarters versus in the final? I think not. I mean, usually I think that it would be because Rafa, uh, Rafa is getting better with each round and he obviously has played his best tennis in the finals because he hasn't lost one yet, uh, hasn't lost the semifinals uh, and hasn't lost the quarterfinals. So, uh, but at the same time, I think that uh, when you're lacking a bit of confidence, it's nice to play a match against the biggest match of the tournament for you, knowing there are other tennis matches going on. Not everybody is looking at Well, everybody is looking at this match, but, but as a player, you know, well, there's no pressure of playing a good match. It's just about winning. When you play a finals, it's just your match, and there's actually some pressure that I need to win, I need to play well, and, and sort of, I hope the crowd gets involved too, because it is the final. None of that is going to enter Rafael's mind in the quarterfinals. Ted, listen, listening to you, I have a feeling that for you, the favorite is Rafa. 
today, no. Uh, tomorrow, no. Yesterday, no. Novak Djokovic is going to be the favorite until that morning, the morning that they play. Really, for me, the weather is going to dictate who becomes the favorite. I'm not saying that Nadal wins if the temperature goes above 25 degrees and it's hot and sunny, but uh, he certainly has a much better chance. And if that's the case, I can then not say I think Djokovic is going to win that match. Okay, but whoever wins that match wins the tournament? Well, that's the problem. Do they play for five and a half hours? Um, is there a rain delay maybe the day before? Do they have to play against either Andy Murray or David Ferrer in the semis after they've spent five hours on court? So it's, it's really hard. Andy Murray's playing great. David Ferrer, Ferrer always plays great. How much are they going to take out of each other in the quarterfinals if they should play there? So I think that uh, there's a lot of ifs and buts uh, in this tournament so far. Okay, nice avoiding the answer, but thanks for your analysis, and it's a pleasure as usual speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much.